Why are they named lucky numbers? Do they bring some kind of luck in math? The term lucky is a little subjective, and it's more about the curiosity and intrigue of mathematicians, referring to when they discover some patterns and interesting sequences of numbers. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before explaining what lucky numbers are and how they're found, what was needed for the concept to be developed? The process of generating lucky numbers closely mirrors the sieve methods used in number theory. Most notably, the sieve of Eratosthenes, which is used to find prime numbers. So, tell me about it. I don't know what sieves are. A sieve is a method or algorithm for finding or filtering out certain numbers, usually prime numbers. The sieve of Eratosthenes is one of the most famous ones, named after the ancient Greek mathematician Eratosthenes of Cyrene, who lived in the 3rd century BC. This sieve is one of the most efficient ways to find small prime numbers, and is a simple yet profound demonstration of number sieving techniques. Start by listing all the numbers from 2 to your desired upper limit and, say this limit is 60. Select the smallest number in your list that hasn't been marked. This number is a prime number. The first time you do this, you'll select 2, since it's the smallest prime. Then cross out all multiples of 2. Move to the next number that is not crossed out, 3. Circle it because it's a prime. Then cross out all multiples of 3 that aren't already crossed out. Move to the next number that is not crossed out, 5. Circle it because it's a prime. Then cross out all multiples of 5. Move to the next number that is not crossed out, 7. Circle it because it's a prime and then cross out all multiples of 7. Then continue this process with the other numbers until you fill the entire table. By the end of the process, the numbers that remain uncrossed are primes. Now, of course, you get that things became a lot more complicated, right? Yeah, obviously. Since math was developed a great deal since ancient Greece, I can't imagine doing this manually now. But what about lucky numbers? Is that a sieving technique as well? You would be surprised. But the next development that led to the concept of lucky numbers was the Josephus problem, a narrative attributed to Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian from the first century. According to the story, during the Jewish-Roman War, Josephus and his 40 soldiers were trapped by Roman forces. The soldiers swore that they wouldn't be captured, so they agreed that they would form a circle and eliminate every third remaining person in sequence until only one was left. Josephus, however, wished to avoid this fate and cleverly calculated the position he should stand in the circle to ensure he was the last man standing, allowing him to surrender to the Romans instead. The Josephus problem asks a general question. Given a group of n people standing in a circle and an elimination step of k where every kth person is removed until only one person remains, what is the position you should stand in to be the last remaining person? Mathematically, the Josephus problem can be expressed and solved using recursion. The position of the last survivor, j of n k, in a circle of n people with step k can be calculated using the recursive formula. Here, j of n minus 1 k calculates the position of the last person left for n minus 1 people, and adding k accounts for the step rate with the module n, ensuring that the counting wraps around the circle correctly. What I don't understand is how does this relate to lucky numbers? I suppose that it was based on the Josephus problem? Something along the lines of eliminating every third number. Exactly. The term lucky numbers was introduced by Gardiner, Lazarus, Metropolis, and Ulam in 1956. They also suggested the idea of sieve of Josephus Flavius as the name because of the similarities, but I guess lucky number is more catchy. And here's how you find lucky numbers. We'll start with the numbers from 1 through 20 and apply the sieving technique. Step 1. Remove every second number, which leaves us only with the odd integers. The first number remaining in the list after 1 is 3, so every third number beginning at 1, which remains in the list not every multiple of 3, is eliminated. The next surviving number now is 7, so every seventh remaining number is eliminated. Continue removing the nth remaining numbers, where n is the next number in the list after the last surviving number. Next in this example is 9. But what's the difference between them and the primes? I mean, I know some of the primes are missing there, but both of them seem awfully similar. 
Well, lucky numbers are generated through a different sieving process. One which creates a sequence that is distinct from the sequence of prime numbers. The motivation behind the invention of lucky numbers and their introduction ties into a broader exploration of stochastic processes and sieving techniques and how these methods can be applied to solve real-world problems or to understand mathematical phenomena. By inventing and studying different sieving techniques, such as the method of generating lucky numbers, mathematicians explore how altering rules and procedures affects the distribution and properties of the resulting number sequences. This exploration can reveal deeper insights into the nature of randomness versus determinism in number theory. Understanding how different sieving processes work helps in developing simulations that can model complex systems in physics, finance, and other fields where randomness plays a crucial role. You know what, now that I think about it, it makes sense that lucky numbers are called lucky. Because the numbers that remain seem like they're lucky to remain in the sequence. When actually what superficially seems like randomness is order. It's one of those sieves that at the moment aren't very applicable to the real world. It's more like math for the sake of math and studying the nature of numbers. In this light, the study of lucky numbers serves as an example of how randomness and probability can be embedded within deterministic frameworks, like sieving, for example, to produce outcomes that are both predictable in a large scale and random in individual instances. This can have many practical implications and help us to understand complex systems. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna love this one. See you there. See you there.